Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Leo New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. We do our work focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals using the opportunity of uh, astrological cycles and the beginning of the new moon cycle. As usual, we start our work today with the alignment, and that will lead us in the alignment. Please. Let us unite our hearts across distance and take a deep breath together and come fully present to experience this new moon webinar in Leo with the focus on Sustainable Development Goal 11, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. And let us take a moment to be aware of our immediate surroundings our environment, inner and outer, and the country we are calling in from today. Now, together and as a group, let us sound the mantra. I am one with my group brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. As we extend our alignment to the very center where the will of God is known, we open to the insight, impressions, and experience of this time together and we connect on all levels with ourselves with one another with nature and with the divine oh. So we'll take just a moment and introduce Sustainable Development Goal 11. And we will do that beginning with two quotes. The first from Agni Yoga. In Fiery World 1, we read, let the straightened times also be blessed. Precisely at such times do we learn to distinguish the significant from the mediocre. In the days of contentment, our vigilance becomes obscured. Yet this quality is especially needed when approaching the fiery spheres. Hence, Oppression and tension are so precious. They not only increase vigilance and impetuosity 
they also force new fires from our innermost depths. Rebecca? So there's such a relationship between um, some of the sentiments in that quote and the work that needs doing on the planet at the moment and also the um, experience that our many of our cities are going through and had just been through at the time that DK was writing problems of humanity just after the end of the Second World War and he spoke about the um, renewal of the cities that would come out of the destruction and um, I guess that's a very first ray idea that that fits with um, coming through straightened times and valuing um, the the preciousness of those terribly adverse moments and I've just taken a little piece of um, some some of the writing that he did DK did at that time um, here where he he forecasts that a new planetary network of cities modern in idea and free from ancient taints and evil will during the next 300 years cover the earth mm. so he was really pointing to a regeneration of our cities at that time thank you and given that we want to share a story as we seed the field for a discussion that we trust will be a, a full group sharing today. In fact, we'll move the meditation up a bit so that we all get our insights and impressions and can share fully about what it is that's emerging. So from bioeconomics, as we as we look at Sustainable Development Goal 11, and we consider sustainable cities and communities. The great horse manure crisis of 1894. We probably don't remember it, but Rebecca just hinted at it. And it was said in, in 1894, it was predicted because everybody had a horse, right? Even taxis were led by horses and buses. It took like 50 horses or something to drive a bus. So it was predicted that in 50 years, every, every city, major city around the world would be in about nine foot of horse manure. It was terrible. So in 1898, the world's first international urban planning conference was held in New York City. It was scheduled for 10 days, and the organizers were quite certain that they could figure this out with people coming in from all over the world, and they could take care of fixing this horse manure crisis. By the third day, the organizers threw up their hands and said, we are doomed there was no way anybody could think through the, this terrible crisis. Humanity, the planet, doomed. Well, little did they realize that just around the corner, early in the next century, Henry Ford would show up with the Model T. And obviously th that idea landed in many places around the world. And when that idea came forth, the automobile took the place of horses and problem solved, so to speak. <laughs> at, this, at this moment in time, we are looking for the kind of transformation. We don't know exactly what this looks like yet, right? In terms of how do we build sustainable cities and communities that are resilient and safe and inclusive. However, we do know that anything is possible. So as we take a look now at uh, SDG 11, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, sustainable, resilient. And as you'll see on the screen now, if you are, are looking at a computer, there are a number of target 
goals within this sustainable cities and communities goals, such as safe, affordable housing, transport systems, cultural and natural heritage, reduced environmental impact, et cetera. Uh, so what we are looking at today is the opportunity for us through our meditative focus to really help realize the, the creative underpinnings of what is striving to emerge. So Rebecca, maybe you want to share some of the stats. Mm. Yeah, and just before I do that, I just would like to refer to the horse story briefly and the Model T Ford, um, because um, transport is, is quite a big problem with our cities, as we know. Um, and I, I found this quote that is so relevant from um, New, New Era Community from um, Master Moya, and he says, among the mechanical attainments of modern civilization, the means of transportation deserve special attention. Um, and he says, the, the devouring of space, which is um, one of the effects of these mechanical means of transport, Portation. And he's especially talking about planes, but I think this is the case with the Model T as well. Um, and the devouring of space is already to a certain, a certain extent a victory over the super mundane spheres. spheres. Um, but he speaks about how this has been been too materialistic, our relationship with transport. And he says, he could, who can fly at a speed of 400 miles an hour or who can fly higher than others, acquires the psychology of a boxing champion and the realization of spiritual responsibility leaves him. It is possible to ennoble the conquest by stripping it of all sporting significance and directing it to labor. Hurry to save the unfortunates. Fly for the unifying of humanity. Then will these conquests enter into evolution. For the people must bring into ordinary usage the super mundane strivings, not forgetting about responsibility. So I just feel that's really relevant to our theme and wanted to share that. Um, so with our city stats, half of humanity lives in cities. So that's more than 3.5 billion people. And that is um, climbing as well, increasing. Cities occupy only 3% of the Earth's land mass, but they're responsible for close to 80% of energy use and 75% of carbon emissions. More than 88 million urban dwellers live in slums, and this number is rising. By 2014, more than 30% of urban populations in the developing world, so the new cities which are being built, um, lived in slums. And it is predicted that by 2030, more than 60% of humanity will be urban and 95% of this increase will be in the developing world. So here we again can tuned to this idea of responsibility that's needed to solve these problems and the openness to what's around the corner in terms of what might come along next in, in impressions and ideas that drop into the consciousness of humanity. Hopefully with that orientation of responsibility. Mm. So the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. And Alexander, maybe you want to share some of the ast astrology of this moment. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, it's, uh, I wouldn't uh, bring now the specifics of the moment. I would want to share in general why we focus on the goal 11 now while we are in Leo. And um, as you've uh, noticed, uh, each goal that we focus on, we link and relate to specific quality, astrological quality. And um, this is the second uh, time we go around the circle of 17 goals. And the first time we talked about this goal, we were in Aquarius. 
and now we're in Leo. And as you know, Leo and Aquarius, it's the same energy, it's opposite aspects of the same quality. And uh, when we bring our focus to goal 11 now, we bring that quality of Leo that gives uh, the focus, the concentration, and the vision. And uh, in a way, our work today, we invite us together to envision this ideal city of the future. So the energy of Leo and the quality of the Leo to pierce through the glamours into the future uh, can help us. But there is also the quality of individualization. Last time we focused on the quality, the aspect of community building, of the group building that's brought by Aquarius. But as an opposite sign to Aquarius, Leo brings that quality of bringing it uh, into the concentrated focus. So it's in a way, it's the next evolutionary phase for the community building and for uh, any group building when uh, the group unity comes. And Rebecca mentioned several times the word responsibility. And that's the quality that Leo brings us. When the group coming from Aquarius come to Leo focus, it becomes group individual, group unity that can absorb the responsibility for all the needs of all group members, but also the environment around it. And that's the gift, one of the gifts that Leo gives us. But also if we think about the cities, cities is a concentration. Uh, we know that the half of the world population lives in the cities now. And uh, city as Leo is a magnet that accumulates people, accumulates ideas. And there is an, even a theory that the uh, certain concentration of people creates environment that stimulates creative thinking. And that's when the transformation and transmutation from one quality to the next level quality comes. So let's use this quality of Leo when we envision today the sustainable cities and communities of the future. Back to you, Rebecca. Yeah, and um, and also there's there's the resonance of the heart um, with Leo, and we've got the sun sign on the screen at the moment showing this beautiful centralization that's that Alexander's talking about, and um, there's such a quality. Um, of courage that gets centralized in the heart um, so and and that's one of the qualities that's associated with Leo and the lion so I just wanted to mention that centralization of courage in the heart and um, again Master Moya has a couple of quotes he says the blessed lion garbed in fearlessness ordained to teach the manifestation of courage and then um, he says, um, much like what we're saying with the sense of responsibility and the openness to imagination of what can come next, courage opens all doors. It's impossible we utter it ourselves. Whereas all that exists cries out, it is possible, it is possible. So um, that, that centralization of courage within the heart and as Alexander is talking about, this sun symbol um, exemplifies the, the centration of um, energy within a vessel and this is what our cities are. And, um, and people are centralized in the cities. 
um, for this centralization of ideas. And DK also speaks about cities as centers of force within the bodies of nations and of the planet. Um, and he gives us some very pithy little um, passages on this. He talks about the five cities being the esoteric expression of the esoteric centers of force, sorry, the exoteric expression of the esoteric centers of force and through which the hierarchy and Shambhala are seeking to work. So he's talking about the five major cities on the planet that he discusses in his work. Um, there, five particular cities, um, and saying that hierarchy and Shambhala are seeking to work through them, and that they are the correspondence in the planetary body of the four centers up the spine and the Ajna center in the body of humanity and of individual man. So we have all these levels of correspondence, microcosmic and mac macrocosmic correspondence. And in all three cases, planetary body, body of humanity, body of individual man, they are living, vital, focal points of dynamic force to a greater or lesser extent, depending on the consciousness and the responsibility. And um, yes, yeah, so this is what Alexander's pointing to with the idea that um, the concentration of minds within cities has the effect of revolutionising thought and giving birth to new ideas. DK also says our cities and national centres are great aggregations of human beings which have come into expression in certain fixed localities because they're expressions of the force centres in the vital body of the nation as well. So there's a, um, a sense of the magnetism of the centres and indeed the localities and the land and the place where the cities form. And that's um, such a different perspective because if we think about the idea that the cities form rather than we build them, <laughs> um, it really opens us up to um, the idea of being more humble, more responsible and receptive in the way we um, seek to create, I suppose. Um, so what we'd like to do now is um, create a field for us all to discuss ideas about cities. Um, and when we were preparing for the webinar today, Alexander mentioned a process that he had done where he had attuned himself to the idea of what is my ideal city? And he had um, tuned into uh, a lot of qualities that he felt were important. Um, in cities and what we would like to do is use that idea and um, invite everybody to tune in to um, what's important about cities and how we vision and create and um, accumulate in our cities and, and what the energies are that we bring in. So that's why we're going to actually go into a meditation process at this moment to open ourselves up to higher impression about that as well. Um, and this is a meditation that anyone who, who was present at the full moon Aquarius um, access this year for the 2025 would have um, touched upon when Sydney Goodwill offered um, their their offering um, at that time, and it's and we're actually it's an actually sorry getting fumbling with my words we're actually going to go forward in time by 50 years to vision our cities um, in the future in this meditation um, and I'm very grateful to Sydney Goodwill and Wendy and Judy for um, giving permission for me to adapt this this meditation for us to use today. So 
um, let's gather and be silent for a moment and then move into this meditative imaginative process. As we bring our focus to SDG 11, sustainable cities and communities and the renewal of our cities through community, we take a moment to bring to mind our purpose of nourishing and enlivening the qualitative aspects of the SDGs. And we invoke the light of soul and spirit into the living organism of the United Nations. May the consciousness of the United Nations become ever more at one and the mighty lights become one light. May the aspiration and the dedication of the United Nations burn as a clear flame in the service of humanity. May the love and the light and the life of the one life pour through the United Nations, cleansing it of all evil and attracting all good. Clear the concrete mind of all worldly concerns through an act of will while breathing deeply and slowly engendering inside us a sea of calm. Connecting with the overshadowing energy of Leo and the sun, enter into the cave of your own heart where courage and vision are focused and centered. Residing within the heart, Become aware of all its many chambers and of the warmth and generosity of its function as a mediating, regulating centre within the sheaths of your being and in the rapport between worlds. Allow this heart awareness to expand as you move into the cave of the group heart of those gathered here now and those listening to the webinar in the future and those with whom we are one in this work. Savour the presence of all our fellow group members.
inspired and immersed within the chambers of the group's subtle heart. We tune to the cosmic rhythm, opening ourselves to higher impression and the unification in awareness of the many worlds. And from this place of unification in the group heart, we extend our awareness across the planet, the whole planet, and throughout the world sensing the pulse of the life flow through the centers that are our cities, towns and communities. And as we do this, as we make this great and subtle attunement, we notice what features and qualities of our cities resonate with the group heart. Calling forth compassion, responsibility, will to good, wisdom, the qualities of the heart resonating with the pulse of our cities. We notice the resonance heart to heart, wherever there may be creative impulses to a new and better world. With mindfulness, care and nurturing of the great life in which we are a part. And now, as a group and within the group heart, we move our subtle being ahead in time, transferring into the future across the unfolding years, observing as though in time-lapse photography, the progressive transformation and regeneration of our cities, towns, and communities, moving through time, finally coming to rest in 50 years time in 2068. Coming to rest within the network of cities of our planet in the year 2068. Identified in the heart in 2068, where all worlds are unified, the fiery, subtle, and manifest worlds. We expand awareness outwards through the world at this time. 
2068. Attuning again to the pulse of the life flow through the centers that are our cities, towns and communities. Opening ourselves to the impressions at this time. Gathering together these impressions, noticing them with mindfulness. Impressions in the manifest world, perhaps also in the subtle spiritual worlds. and perhaps even in the fiery world of divine being. The source of all manifestation. Pouring its fire into the hearts and minds of our men, of men and of our cities. cities of the future. And from this perspective, in 2068, we look back in time to 2018. And we see the course of change, the many pathways for change. And we identify and make notes of those magnetic seeds of the future lying back there in 2018, which have led us to where we are now in 2068. Sensing that connection potency of the seed power expanded to reach its potential. And as we gather together the wholeness of those connected impressions, past and future, now and future, future and now, we transfer our awareness to become centered back into our current time in 2018, bringing with us an awareness of the sparks of the future with which we can now envision it into being. And we will radiate this energy by sounding the OM and as we do so remaining connected to the seeds and the impressions so that we can continue the radiation of that OM into a group sharing 
that synthesizes and brings together the impressions so that we can offer them into the chalice of thinking that nourishes sustainable development goal 11. Drawing together the impressions as we sound the on. And as we slowly come back together into this plane and into the webinar, um, I'll ask Alexander to just um, open the technicalities up so that people can um, speak yeah. and share impressions. So we invite uh, now the sharing of those seeds that we could see from the 50 years time in the future, looking back, and share those seeds in, with the group. And so um, we would love to hear your voice, but you can write those impressions in the comment section. But in order to speak, please raise your hand, uh, use the function raise your hand on the control panel and we will unmute you. And let the sharing begin. <laughs> There is a uh, sharing that is Lynn sent uh, to the group. I reposted it to the chat section. The theories presented are profound and can perhaps be initiated on a practical level by the introduction of the idea of minimalism in everyday life, a challenge both to creativity and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah. This is Doc speaking. And as we went forward 50 years, and you said kind of like time lapse uh, photography, what happened was almost like a, a wave after wave after wave of color and light that was increasingly distinct and at the same time, unitive, uh, inner and outer. Uh, and it was as though the entire planet, as it says, all the lights unite and yet hold their own distinct flame, if you will. Uh, it became very clear that, that that is the direction we're headed and I appreciate this comment a challenge both to creativity and sacrifice to make sacred right so this idea of minimalism that allows mm -hmm. the light to shine and not get blocked by all the uh, material form 
Mm. Yeah, such a beautiful connection and our, our moment or our influence of Leo as the light of the soul shining out um, from that center as well. Yeah. One uh, in aspect of that minimalism, um, how it could actually unfold on a practical level, it uh, could be optimization of the processes. And it's a very seventh ray quality. Mm -hmm. So when the process is effective and optimal, it requires minimal effort. Mm. And so that was my impression that this example that Dot gave us in the beginning about this manure crisis that in a way we're experiencing this manure crisis now uh, on the next uh, spiral and we don't really see where that uh, shift could actually come from and I think technology would play again again its role in this shift and that would be in optimization of all the processes of uh, on many levels starting mm -hmm. with the governance uh, going to communication processes uh, going further into all sorts of infrastructures that actually allow mm -hmm. cities to function efficiently mm -hmm. yeah, and I think so much of that is um, um, centered around that idea of responsibility again okay, it's a bit of a heavy idea but um, just uh, maybe not even using that word but just the idea of focusing towards the good which again is that focus at the center of the sun um, and focusing on what is important for people and what helps people and what um, brings light to the group um, and um, I think that there's examples we've actually got some practical examples here that we can talk about um, that are already happening so they're already um, seeds here in um, in now 2018 um, and if I can get my, there we go. As you, as, um, yeah, as you pull that up, uh, Rebecca, there are two more comments here, oh, all three, yeah. three. We can just read them in. Yeah, um, yeah so, okay. Joshua, there is a beautiful um, vision of the future set out for us in the book Journey to the Future by Guy Dauncey, a Canadian futurist. The website is journey to the future dot ca he doesn't go quite as far into the future as we did in our meditation but he substantiates all his ideas with things that are happening in cities mm. around the world right now which is exactly what you're saying and what we've been mm. looking into in relation to this and then yeah. Uh, and then Richard comments, following on from Dot, I saw what appeared to be a new quality of light, a clarity without glare, a vibrancy and vitality of this light. Beautiful. And Antoinette says, I see the whole world as a labyrinth, revitalizing, energy transversing or traversing throughout gathering from each corner to meet at the core and unfolding from there. Hmm. Is it Jake? In relation to this goal, I want to mention the amazing work of Jacques 
Fresco, Architectural Design and Social Engineering for the Future. He received a UN award for his project, The Venus Project, mm -hmm. in 2016. And Frida shares, I was thinking about an area of the city of Toronto today called Parkdale. It is an area that has many poor people, significant drug problems, and some very old and rundown apartment buildings. My thought was that this area needs a Parkdale Development Coalition and Master Plan that would plan for the next 25 years, but include the people and groups that are affected. The plan would need to include the demolition of some of these old buildings, but include new and better public and low income housing and community services. I think a plan is always the beginning of real change. Yeah, well, maybe we could put capital P on that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, I think this example that you have in the uh, screen now, it's a very good example of that kind of transformation uh, that happened in Vienna. Can you talk mm. about it, please? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so um, the the plan that came about with a capital P in Vienna um, actually happened between the two world wars um, and um, there was a terrible problem with housing and housing was um, running for profit for people, for landlords and people who had um, um, focused on uh, obtaining the the money from rental and everything for themselves um, and the actual council stepped in there was a change in government now and they called it the red years in Vienna um, with that more socialist influence but um, still today there is um, a strong um, foundation on that original plan that continues in Vienna and what they what happened was that the administration be, began to control rental so they said they made a rule that rental couldn't keep going up it had to be remain within affordable bounds um, and they also placed taxes on private land um, so that it was more expensive to actually purchase property and land. And this disincentivized building for profit um, and building in general, and it made the land prices go right down so that um, people were then no longer speculating on land for personal profit. And the council itself was actually able to buy up a lot of the land and then dedicate it to these housing schemes, which they, um, hired, um, you know, really good architects for and um, designed beautiful livable housing that was made, apartments that were made available at affordable cost. And um, um, this is a, the, the link is down at, at the bottom here. It's a very long link um, um, to, um, the Vienna Housing Affordability Case Cracked is the title of the article if you want to search it. Um, but the a quote from there was that burdensome land costs and the rentiers who gain massive wealth by passive land speculation are the real enemies of this problem. Um, so that that's the um, <laughs> the individual centration of the Leo before it becomes sublimated, I suppose. And what's happened in Vienna is that um, the council and the governance in that city has started to treat land like the precious community asset that it is. Um, so it's giving us an example that our cities can acquire and keep land in the hands of the people who live on it and we should never sell city-owned land. Um, <clears throat> and this article was actually comparing the current situation in Vancouver with um, accommodation crisis and um, problem with rising property um, costs and rental costs and everything there. And, you know, pointing to this solution that has already been enacted out um, that we can use this idea 
and it's coming to the centre of the common good instead of the personal good. Do we have any more comments in the meantime or yes. anyone who wants to speak? We'd love if someone would like to speak. We have two more comments. Okay. Uh, it says, I saw the truth of right relationship alive on the planet. Right relationship between people, with the earth, and with the soul. A world where the will and purpose of Shambhala is united with love and alive for all of humanity. Catherine shares, there was a sense of efficient transport fueled by green energy, perhaps a reflection of the clarity of the etheric field of a city and integration of the field of a city. Also, the idea of diversity being important as a city being a microcosm of the global community. And from Claire, Martin Luther King's vision of beloved communities speaks beautifully in the SDG 11, www.thekingcenter.org slash king dash philosophy. Um, Claire, you unmuted. Do you want to add something to that? Oh, yes, just hello, everybody, and thank you so much. That was the most beautiful, beautiful meditation um, journey, um, Rebecca. That was um, a very blessed experience. Thank you. Um, also, Alexander, I wanted to thank you for what you said about the Leo heart and um, the relationship between Leo and, and Aquarius at this time and relevant to um, this vision and this um, sustainable goal with Leo being kind of, I sort of see it as Leo being at the heart, but also as the heart of all these new um, Aquarian group initiatives. And I was thinking how the efficacy and the well-being of our towns and cities in the future actually depends so much on um, on groups of individuals coming together to grow um, nuclei and networks of beloved community. I really do love Martin Luther King's vision and sort of see what he's proposed is very much sort of central to the process of us sacredizing our planet. That, um, you know, it's this collaborative effort between us and all kingdoms. Um, so for me, it's like the greening of the cities and shared open spaces where initiatives like community gardens and open door homes become what I come to think of as secular altars or secular churches. Because as this new world religion comes into being and the old forms and paradigms fall away, we still have this deep, deep yearning for, um, for community and for sacred spaces and um, places of pause where we we can be alongside together. So it brings me back to that idea of the heart with many, many chambers that Rebecca um, and Dot, all of you that you mentioned, you know, with the heart's intelligent being the guiding light for our community building. Um, can I read just a wee quote from the um, Dr. King's website? Have we got time for that? Because it... Um, yes, yes, please. Would that be right? Yeah. Um, on his website, there's this um, whole section that's written up about beloved community, and this is one of the sections that stood out for me in relationship today to today. Um, it, it, it says, for, for Dr. King, the beloved community was not a lofty utopian goal to be confused with the rapturous image of the peaceable kingdom in which lions and lambs coexist in idyllic harmony. Rather, the beloved community was for him a realistic, achievable goal that could be attained by a critical mass of people committed to and trained in the philosophy and methods of nonviolence and what we would call harmlessness and right speech. Dr. King's beloved community is a global vision in which all people can share in the wealth of the earth. In the beloved community, poverty, hunger and homelessness will not be tolerated because international standards of human decency will not allow it. Racism and all forms of discrimination, bigotry and prejudice will be replaced by an all-inclusive spirit of sisterhood and brotherhood. 
in the beloved community, international disputes will be resolved by peaceful conflict resolution and reconciliation of adversaries instead of military power. Love and trust will triumph over fear and hatred. Peace with justice will prevail over war and military conflict. Dr. King's beloved community was not devoid of interpersonal group or international conflict. Instead, he recognized that conflict was an inevitable part of human experience. But he believed that conflicts could be resolved peacefully and adversaries could be reconciled through a mutual determined commitment to nonviolence. No conflict, he believed, need erupt in violence. And all conflicts in the beloved community should end with reconciliation of adversaries cooperating together in a spirit of friendship and goodwill. It goes on, but I'll stop there. But it's well worth exploring um, the website, I think. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Claire. Thank you all Thank you. so much, Doc. Thank you. Very beautiful sharing today. Thank you. Thank and you. As, as we move to close, and Alexander, you'll take us uh, take us to that. There is one other website, as uh, Rebecca and Alexander uh, and I were discussing the current practical examples. Uh, there's the Illumination Project, the Vienna Housing, as, as uh, Rebecca shared, the Preston Model, Marinaleda, and, and others. You can find that on solutions.thischangeseverything.org. Thanks, Don. Yeah. We are coming now to the close to, of the webinar, but there is one more raised hand. I, uh, Lucy, if you want to just briefly share your impressions add into the group field and we will go into the closing hey hello it's lucy from geneva um do you hello, hear me? Uh, can yeah. you hear me so it was just to build on the last comments um i see indeed in the cities today that we are suffocating from separateness and um, I see cities where the logic is built for people to get connected to one another. Um, that is something that could be supported by the presence of robots. As Alexander was mentioning before, technology could really play a major role in, in the ship, as they could maybe free humans some time to work together, you know, about the inner aspect of group living. Um, today, it seems that we are joining cities um, only about easy consumption and conveniency, but maybe we could give like greater purpose and meaning to this uh, the fact of, of gathering together in cities and having more time to build like uh, strong centers where we could be um, working together about you know, the strength and energy that is um, for the group of, of, of people living in the city. So that was just my point. Yeah. And thank you for the nice talks and everything. It was very, very amazing. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, everyone. We invite you to join our coming webinars focusing on this UN Sustainable Development Goals. We see this work as an important work of qualification of sustainable development goals. And that's something that we as World Service can and should do. So thank you for this time together. And uh, let's stay connected. And um, our next uh, coming webinar will be the Burgess Solo Festival webinar on August 26, and we will continue work on focusing on the C groups. In the sign of Virgo, we will focus on the group of magnetic healers. 
uh, and Philip Lindsay will share his perspective on this group, um, on the level of the world healing. And uh, Kathy Newborn and Dad Maver will join him, uh, comprising the triangle of the second ray, as uh, uh, Kathy will be presenting in Pisces, and that was our speaking Gemini. So that would be our second ray focus on the Virgo. And uh, let's end our work today with sounding. Gayatri. O thou who givest the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by the disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Mm.